taking a few minutes out of your afternoon to um, take a look at the Starship and Panatrack um, integration. Um, we're really excited about it, um, and we're excited to show you. So with that, we'll just go ahead. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a little intro on V Technologies in case you're not familiar with our company. Um, we have been specializing in shipping solutions since 89. That's all we really do at V Technologies um, is provide um, a way for customers to easily get their shipments out the door. We have quite a few years of um, extensive knowledge in the GP product. Um, and we've built relationships with many carriers, both on the parcel and the LTL side, as well as related applications, such as the Panatrack solution and EDI providers. We have um, thousands of customers using Starship um, to help gain, gain efficiencies in shipping and also accounts receivable and customer service. And we'll show you a little bit about um, how we can help you get your shipments out the door today. Pam, are you on? Yep, I'm on. Can, can you okay. hear me? Yep. OK, Thanks. great. Uh, we've been in business, as Adrian had pointed out, since 1996. Our Panatracker GP product, uh, which is directly integrated to Microsoft Dynamics, is a um, uh, has been in the in the market since 2004. We have solutions for inventory and fixed assets, um, and we'll be showing you some of the uh, one of the key features of our inventory solution with the integration with uh, Starship, um, and that's what we'll be showing uh, next. So, um, what I'm going to be uh, displaying for you, or what I'm going to be pointing out with you today, is um, the uh, the integration with. Um, the uh, Starship solution. Our solution works on a mobile computer, similar to the one that you're seeing over to the right of your screen. Um, and basically, we're using the barcode technology and the ability to be able to capture transactions at the point in time that you're handling that inventory. As you can see over to the left, I have some examples of just some empty boxes. And one of the suggestions we use for this solution is we want to identify what's packed in each specific box. So what we recommend is potentially getting pre-printed serialized IDs, shipping box IDs that you can apply to your boxes to be able to scan in the inventory into. And I'll be showing you that on the handheld. So um, over to the left, also now that I just pulled over onto my screen, is the actual in the handheld itself that I'm actually using. Um, it's on an interface that I'm able to provide you the ability to see what I'm doing up on the screen for you. And this is basically our orders main menu screen. And we're going to be working with the fulfill order. And I do want to point out just a couple other features. I want to keep this fairly simple to start out with. But with not only the fulfill order, we do have the ability to do batch picking. In other words, grouping orders, uh, multiple orders, to pick at one time. And then we can also do a second verification. And the pack process can actually happen at that point in time. To kind of simplify things, I'm going to be using our fulfillment process that's going to pick and pack the order um, at the same time uh, using that shipping box technology that I just uh, discussed with you. So the first thing I'm going to bring up is our order list. And we have a lot of ways of being able to display the orders. And I'm just going to be scanning an order um, to be able to pull up the order I'm going to be picking. And it's going to then represent and display for you the list of all the items I need to pick. We have a little inf additional information on here, including uh, what uh, is my available quantities and dynamics. It's also going to be able to sort based on uh, bin location and the various different things there. So I'm going to just start with my first item. And I'm going to go into my pick screen. And I'm going to go ahead and scan that item that I'm validating I'm picking the correct item. And I'm going to get to my slide. I'm going to be actually going to uh, enter this stuff into my first shipping box. So I'm going to again scan the item, confirm the item I'm scanning, uh, enter in my quantity. And then I'm going to be able to scan that shipping box ID that I'm, this is what I'm uh, uh, putting that inventory into. Now I'm going to go to the next item. This is going to be a serial tracked item. So we do support serial and lot tracked inventory. Again, I'm going to scan the item to validate I'm picking the correct item. Scan my serial number and the box that I'm uh, going to put that item in. Go to the next serial number. Scan the item, the box I'm putting it in. Now that box is full, so I'm going to go to my next box. And oops, there we go, <laughs> next box. And so I'm going to scan my next serialized item. And I'm going to be putting in shipping box number two here. And we'll do a few of those uh, 
additional serial numbers into those shipping bags. So you can see with the, the uh, scanning capability, we do get a lot of accuracy. Um, if there's any problems, any issues, we'll present error messages to the user. Now we'll go on to my next item. And so next we'll go ahead and scan that item. Enter in my quantity. Again, shipping box number two still has room in it, so I'll put it in there. And then uh, we'll go to my final item. And I still have a little bit of more room in that box, so I'm going to be able to enter in a few more items in that box. Um, scan in my shipping box. And then I'm going to then uh, go to my next box, because I am full in that box. Oops, wrong one. Here we go, shipping box three. Now I'm going to scan that item one more time. Enter in my quantity and my last shipping box. Now that I'm all complete with that order pick, we'll come back and you'll notice that all my line items are identified as being picked complete. I'm going to now be able to submit this order to go back to Dynamics. So I'm going to just hit my Submit button. It's going to process that um, and send that in details back to Dynamics. And we've got the confirmation everything was good to go. And now I'm going to go to um, my next screen, which is going to tell you what we've just updated as part of our solution, uh, as part of that submit. So first of all, we updated the quantities fulfilled. We updated all the serial details that were captured on the line item for those for that order. And then we've also updated the batch ID to indicate that everything was picked complete. If I didn't pick everything complete for this order, I can have another batch ID to indicate that there was a partial pick. We do also have the option to automatically print some packing lists. So at that point in time, if you want to go ahead and print packing lists, you can do so. Um, that's something you can also do as part of the Starship process as well. And now that I've got these my three boxes, the other information that we've sent, I've submitted all the details of that pick down to that box level and exactly what's in each of those boxes to a shared table infrastructure that we share with, uh, with Starship so that they can then grab that information to be able to then to pro to accurately process your shipping uh, part of the solution. So I'm going to now turn it back over to Caroline so that she can go ahead and show you the shipments. And I don't know if we want to open up for questions um, at this time for my por portion of it, but uh, otherwise we'll turn it over to Caroline. And thank you so much, Pam. Uh, I'm not seeing any questions. Again, audience, please, if you have any questions, use the raise your hand feature next to your name on your webinar pane or the question mark. Just go ahead and click on that, and then a dialog box will open up where you can enter your question, and uh, we can read it live. Thank you so much. And Caroline, you can go ahead and proceed. We see your screen. OK, great. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks, Pam. So um, Pam just packed up <clears throat> three boxes with various information using the um, Panda Tracker GP application. And what we're going to show you now is what you need to do in Starship to automate the shipping of these packages. So as Pam pointed out, she had some license plates that um, were just little stickers that were um, associated to the boxes. So in um, Starship, in this um, packed sales transaction that we now have, um, in conjunction with uh, the Panda Tracker solution, the um, shipper can just scan that barcode directly into Starship, and Starship will come up with all the information. Now, this can be either um, done um, in order, out of order. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and put the, actually the third box in up on my screen. And you'll notice what happened is Starship retrieved all of the header level information from the GP order. And in conjunction, it picked all the packaging information that was stored in those tables that Pam had mentioned. So here's my um, header level information in our preview area on the left-hand side of our screen here. Um, you'll see the sender as well as the recipient coming over. And down here at the bottom of the Starship screen, you'll notice the packaging view where we have those three boxes. And we're actually actively on that um, box that we scanned. So this would be the license plate number uh, with the 1003. If I expanded um, to look at all the items that are in these boxes, um, you'll be able to see that here's um, the box as well as the item level information. And so we can just um, get all that in information. It really can help from um, international or BOL shipments 
uh, where we can print out and automate uh, the documentation in those two cases. So the other thing that you can do from the ship screen, if you wanted to, you can do a rate shop. Um, Starship will go out to all the various carriers and rate the shipment that we have, and then be able to display that all in one place for you. So you'll notice here that Starship translated the ship via that was on this order to UPS three-day select. However, um, we do have USPS and FedEx as options in Starship right now. So if I wanted to, I could select one of the um, methods here that may be less expensive than going three-day. Or I can just keep the translation um, based on what I've set up in Starship. So when I'm ready to um, ship my next box, then I'm going to go ahead and process this one. And now you'll see that um, this is a what we can call the smart label in Starship. It's going to be um, an 8.5 by 11 sheet that will have the packing list on one side, as well as the shipping label in a die cut area of the second side. So the shipper can then place the shipping label directly on the box and put the packing list right inside. The packing list is going to have the item level information that was defined using the Panda Tracker GP solution. And now I'm ready to enter my next license plate number. So let's try um, Pam's first package here. Um, and once I enter that in, we're going to be um, grabbing this license plate, 1001. You'll notice also on my packaging tab that there is um, this SSCC number that's being generated by Starship. Starship can print the GS1128 label. And we do have um, connections to EDI solutions, such as True Commerce and Redtail. So that can automate your entire um, EDI workflow as well. So let's just go ahead and process this particular um, box, or box two of three. Again, we're going to have the packing list that's going to print the items that were in this box, as well as the related shipping label that will be put on the outside of the box. And my last one should be the 1002. And we can process this. Again, my label with my packing list. And now in Starship, you're basically ready to enter in your next shipment um, and the first license plate for that package. And that's pretty much it. So the combination of Starship and the Panda Tracker GP solution really can simplify the shipping process. Because um, in the past with Starship, we would just bring over header and item level information. And then customers would have to like manually define the the packages. Um, we give them some um, capabilities of um, defining items and boxes through um, mouse, but the barcoding solution really can help automate that process so the shipper does, doesn't have as much um, manual entry on that end. So um, I wanted to just show you really quick um, another area where item level information can be used, and that would be in um, branded, our branded email notification module. Let's just bring up our um, email viewer here, and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, let's log in here. Oops. So now you'll see um, in this view that um, I have an email that's been processed by Starship. Um, it's branded to have an, a logo on it all the ship to information. And in the body of this email, you'll notice that I have all the package information as well as the tracking number that's associated to that package information, and then all the items that are in that package. So the recipient will be able to know right away how many packages they're getting, what's going to be in the boxes. Um, so when they are um, ready to receive these back boxes, they'll have all the information ahead of time um, to know what's coming where. Um, other things about the email notification um, that Starship provides is um, you, can, you can not only brand it, you can put hyperlinks in it, a lot of marketing wrapped around it, which um, customers will like, because uh, you can send them back to your website. Maybe you have a, a customer portal where they can log in and put their information. 
So you could pull all that information into this email and send them right back to your website. It also gives you a consistent message across all carriers and modes. So Starship can send this exact same um, email for UPS, FedEx, post office, as well as your LTL carriers. And then you can also attach shipping documents, such as um, BOL, commercial invoice. Uh, any shipping document that you define on this template can be included. The other big thing with this email notification is that it will um, send these emails out as you're shipping, or it can. Uh, so as soon as the shipment is processed, this email can actually go out, and the recipient will have access to the tracking information immediately. Um, you can also set the email notification to go out at specific times or in intervals. Um, there's a lot of flexibility wrapped around that. So in addition to getting all the output from um, an email and um, packing list and shipment label perspective, Starship will also update the sales transaction on the original order. So let me just go into um, sales transaction entry real quick and just show you what Starship can do from that perspective. Um, so the original order, I believe, was order 1110 PM. Yep. Let's type that in. Oh, one more one in there. Oops. Thanks, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> Not letting me get in there. Let's go to the actions and delete that. Thanks. <laughs> OK, let's try that again. So there's my order. Um, this is the order that Pam originally scanned in through the handheld and did all the packing on. Um, well, Starship can, um, after you've packed it up, we can update the notes with the um, detail, a little more detail about the, um, the shipment. This is all user-definable information here. So um, you can define exactly what you see in your note file if you'd like. We can also update the batch ID to shipped or whatever you um, wish that to be so that they can, uh, your front office or um, invoice and staff can see that these particular, this particular order has been shipped. Um, and then in the user-defined area, we can update the tracking number. So these go back to uh, the tracking number table inside of GP. And then the freight charges. These freight charges can include customizable handling fees. Starship also has something called freight rules that will allow you to define conditions, how and when the freight actually gets updated on the GP transaction. I think that's all I had from um, a Starship perspective. Uh, um, Adrian, do you have any questions coming through? Yes, we do. We have a couple questions. Um, first question, do the cart and item relationships get stored in Dynamics GP? They do get stored um, in tables in Dynamics GP. Um, those would be the tables that um, you know are shared between the Panda Tracker GP solution and the Starship solution. And yeah, somebody would like um, the the tables are are a SQL table, so they certainly could bring in that detail, like in a smart list view, um, doing a, a creating a, a smart list to smart list builder. Um, a lot of our our solutions we have additional user fields that people can bring in um, to display some additional information uh, on that level. And then we have another question here: Can you please show an example of the bill of lading generation? Sure. Um, let's see. I didn't. Let me just see if we have BOL set up here. <laughs> um, so in Starship, um, the different types of um, labels that you you have, um, either the labels themselves, shipping labels, or documents. Um, a BOL would be considered a document, and we support both the straight and the VIX. So I can enable this. I can do a preview on ship. I can also define the carriers for any one bill of lading. So you can um, have 
different types of bill of ladings, maybe for different carriers, or you can define conditions um, by which this BOL would print. Um, also, let me just check. I apologize, I wasn't um, wasn't really ready for a BOL. <laughs> um, looks like we do have some carriers here, so let's check to see what we can do here. I'm just going to put in some customer information here. Um, And then if we click on this, um, the freight button up top, it will automatically go into freight mode. Um, the other way that you can get into freight mode is to um, have your ship via automatically translate to a freight carrier inside a Starship. Once you translate over to freight mode, you'll notice that now we have two levels of packaging. We have um, the, um, the items in the boxes as well as the box on the pallet. Um, in this case, you'll notice that this box is um, it's just kind of sitting by itself. Um, you can either have a loose, this is considered loose, um, or you could um, define it on a pallet and have it sitting on pallets and many boxes on pallets. So you have options there. I'm going to go into the BOL view here uh, because you can quickly um, just enter in some information. Um, the other thing is uh, if we grab item level information from GP, we can do something similar um, as what we did with um, in Pam's scenario where uh, we bring the items and packages over and those automatically come over onto the BOL. So the bare minimum information that I'm going to need here is uh, the total weight. Um, and Starship also supports groups. Um, where you can group uh, several items into one um, group or um, it basically is a category. So if you want your BOL to have all the items rolled up by class 55 and you call it something generic, um, you can do that. Let's create a freight class here. And let me see if I can get a rate from this. Um, also in the, um, eh, let's see, some of them we don't have accounts for, but here we do have Old Dominion, Conway, and YRC showing. So um, from here, you'll notice um, we can do something similar to what I showed in Parcel, where we can um, rate all of these um, by the carrier modules, um, and you can sort these if you wanted to. Uh, these connections that we have, what you're looking at right now, um, are direct carrier connections. So this would be if you have um, a contract or negotiated rate with the LTL carrier. Um, Starship will actually send rate transactions out to the carrier's servers and then retrieve the charges um, directly after that. So these would be your negotiated um, rates with the carrier. Maybe I want to go Old Dominion in this case because it's the least expensive way to go. And let's try to process this. OK. Do I not have a commodity description on there? Let's see. Let's just put an item in. Oops. There are also a lot of um, details that you can set up in Starship um, as far as uh, what information is needed um, to, to process the shipment. Um, you, I did this manual BOL entry here, um, but you could also um, define, um, define it using the items. You could force the user to um, always use the items that are coming over from the order. Um, let me just show you what it looks like if I were to actually move some of these guys. Um, onto this pallet here. So now I do have one pallet with some loose items in there, this green phone. I can move this green phone into this custom box if I wanted to um, and have the weights coming over. 
make this weight slightly more because you probably have more than three pounds going on a pallet, hopefully. Now let's try to process this and see if it likes it. Nope. Let's go back to the BOL entry real quick. Here's my commodity strategy. Do we know you're live? <laughs> I'm sorry? I said, do we know that you're live? <laughs> 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 I obviously didn't have um, the LTL shipments in my. <laughs> I guess, Pam, we should have thought about that ahead of time. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> or I should have. One of us should have. Um, what doesn't it like here? Let's try green in here. That's my commodity description. We can put it here, too. Let's try that. Woohoo! <laughs> Man, rough. This is why we integrate into the financial system. <laughs> okay. Woohoo! Okay. So here we go with our BOL. Um, it's going to have my information or the shipper's information, the consignee information, um, as well as the item level information showing in the body of the BOL. This is, again, this is a straight BOL that I just enabled, um, but you could have the VIX BOL. You can also modify this BOL if you wanted to. This um, is also going to have both the um, BOL number as well as the PRO number. So if we do get the PRO number directly from the carrier, we'll update uh, the tracking information in GP with the PRO number. Otherwise, we'll use the BOL number. And then um, also when you set up the email notifications, that particular email notification that I had set up earlier was I set it just for parcel. Um, but you could um, define a separate freight one if you wanted to, or you could use one for both parcel and freight. Uh, so in addition to printing the, the BOL, um, Starship can also print out the package and pallet level labels. And you would just set those up in the printing setup. They're um, all available from Manage Label. So you have some options there um, if you want to do the package label with barcodes um, or without them, and then the pallet label with the barcodes and without. Adrian, did you have um, any other questions? I do. I have quite a few questions here. Um, how did Starship know it was <laughs> three different box sizes? And that might have been a while back. I didn't want to interrupt your flow. OK. Um, actually, there's um, some, um, you can either automate that through the, um, the packaging. Um, and Pam, uh, maybe you could give me some more detail on that on your side. Um, there are some package uh, tables that we can share um, and um, where we can store that information. And so I'm not sure if they would do that on your side. On our side, we definitely have the ability to create different package types. Um, yeah, potentially that's something um, I believe that we're working on uh, finalizing. Um, the best way for us to handle that is that we know that you've got those specified, uh, specified um, box or packaging uh, uh, identified in your system that we'd be able to uh, pass that along to you to identify uh, what, what type of box it was packed into. Um, that is something uh, that's going to be um, basically uh, with some kind of a prefix potentially on a container code um, or that type of a thing. So if you've got those different shipping labels that you've pre-printed, um, potentially one of them would be uh, have different prefixes to ident identify the different boxes that you'd then be able to assign and we'd be able to identify by that prefix. Thanks, Pam. And then we have another question. Um, what about loose items that aren't going in a box? Um, um, so I guess, that, <laughs> go ahead, Caroline. <laughs> I was just going to say, um, well, there's different types of packaging that you can set up in Starship. Um, so sometimes, like, customers may ship a tire, for instance, where you just put the label directly on the tire. Um, in that instance, you could still, like, pack it into something. It just 
wouldn't be, you know, the box would kind of be just there as a container holding that um, so that you in Starship can view it as um, a, an item underneath that particular container. Yeah, part of it you could put, to, I mean, if those tags don't necessarily have to be assigned to a specific box. I mean, if, if they wanted a, a shipping tag, or if you want a shipping tag assigned to that item, um, kind of that same kind of a license plate, that's certainly something you could do that doesn't necessarily have to represent necessarily a box. Um, I guess it would be just kind of depend upon um, how you'd want to set that up. If it's not a box, um, I'm guessing, uh, Caroline, on the order level, you'd know that there's those other items um, that were um, part of that order that would be uh, part of the shipping. Yeah, so whatever we see in the, the tables that's packed, um, you know, we, we have like a little box just as an, an, like a logo there, but it could be just really the idea that this, this set of um, items or item is, you know, uh, going into or shipping out in some way. So you could actually, if you wanted to put, you know, a license plate directly on the tire, you could do that and it would still be somewhat uh, quote unquote loose, um, but it would still be kind of contained in Starship as its own like unit of, um, of sh that's being shipped. And next question, um, can you palletize boxes from Panatrack to Starship? There's a setting in Starship that um, will allow you, once you like bring over all the boxes, if you go to freight mode, um, there's a setting to put all the boxes onto a pallet. Um, and then from there, you could um, you know, either define multiple pallets and just make the pallet count more, such as you know, bringing it from one to five, or you could move the boxes around inside of Starship to define specific boxes on pallets. And um, Pam, <laughs> This question is for you, or did you have something to add there, Pam? Nope. Okay. Nope, go ahead. Um, this question is directed to you. Um, if you could please confirm uh, if Panatrack supports transactions in addition to the pick-pack process, like receiving? Yes. Yep, yes. Our, our, our inventory solution, um, we have a full suite of solutions available. So we, uh, we can support all the standard inventory transactions that anybody would need to do. So uh, receiving adjustments, transfers, um, move, bin to bin movements, um, stock counting. Um, so we're a full featured solution for uh, your inventory management. And we also have some advanced features such as we've uh, built in something, features such as directed transfer, so you can do internal transfer orders, um, ASN receiving. Um, so we do have uh, various solution levels that we offer um, based on what somebody might need for functionality, but we do support um, all inventory-related types of transactions. Thank you. And we do have another question. Can you change packaging types with the prefixes as instead of a box, it would be an ID or crate or roll, etc.? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's talking about the different prefixes on a different box to identify what type of a box or what type of a container. Yes. Can Is you that, change packaging yeah. types? And, and that uh, when you say... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say that I'm, I'm just uh, when, when change packaging types, um, you mean what different ones that you assign to each... As you're picking, you can have different ones or change them once it's been picked and you want to change it to something different. I just want to confirm the uh, question. And there is additional feature or additional question, I think, an add-on for this um, for boxes, especially ones that might not be defined ahead of time. Could you put the size in Panatrack and have it transfer to Starship? At this, at this point in time, we do not have that feature. Uh, certain, something we can look at adding in um, if it's something that's, uh, that somebody's looking to do, but currently we do not have that feature. But on the flip side of that, once you brought in um, that particular box using the um, license plate, you could always in Starship you know, go in and manually um, put in dimensions um, or select the uh, packaging from um, the packages that you've defined in Starship. So you do have that ability um, within the shipping solution. And I'm not seeing any more. Oh, yep, we do have one more question here. 
Um, does Panatrack process any manufacturing transactions such as material issues and or production reporting against a manufacturing order? Uh, we are working, uh, we do have our new version release that's going to be coming out in another uh, couple of months that we're just finishing up an integration. We do have a uh, vicinity uh, integration for manufacturing that's currently available. Uh, we're also working on initiatives to uh, integrate with Horizon and GP Manufacturing is in currently in uh, the final development steps. So yes. And I don't see any more questions, but I did want to um, ask a couple polls, if I may, while you're thinking of other questions. Um, I have a couple polls here to launch. And if we could just take a moment of time, audience, to answer these questions, if that would be wonderful. Are you interested in learning more about Starship? Forty-three percent voted. Fifty-seven percent. Seventy-one percent. And I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Take a couple more seconds. There's a few of you that have not voted. I'll close that out and share the results. It looks like 60% of you are interested in learning more. And then I'm going to go ahead and hide that. Um, and just have one question here. Are you currently using any sort of shipping software? Fifty-seven percent, seventy-one percent. And I'll go ahead and close that out and share those results. Sixty percent yes, forty percent no. And then I have one more question, if I may. Um, are you interested in learning more about Panatrack? Seventy-one percent voted. I'll go ahead and close this one out in five more seconds. All right, and then share the results. Looks like uh, Pam and Caroline, we have eighty percent interested in learning more about Panatrack and twenty percent no. And I'm going to go ahead and hide that and. If anybody has any questions that you think of after, uh, please feel free to give uh, Caroline a call at Starship Sales or Pam a call at Panatrack Sales. And um, we will be reaching out to you and we will send you the, a copy of the recording. Uh, and thank you so much for spending time with us today. Pam and Caroline, did you have anything you wanted to close with? No, just I'll wanted just say, to thank um, you. say oh, thanks. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, go ahead, Pam. You can, you can speak for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just thank everybody for attending. Of course, uh, be happy to answer any additional questions. Uh, we do schedule uh, personal uh, evaluation web webinars or, or web demos um, that we can talk specifically on what you're looking for, um, and then we can go to the uh, specific transactions that you um, are looking to uh, meet your data collection needs. Um, and Caroline, I'm going to let you finish off then. <laughs> um, I pretty much have the same information as Pam. We, we can provide one-on-one um, -on -one, um, demo just to go over and review all the shipping requirements that anyone may have, specifics on um, the, uh, the carriers, that kind of stuff. 
Um, and uh, if the customer asking about LTL wants to see um, a nicer <laughs> LTL version where we actually have some um, information coming over, we can definitely set something up for that. And thank Thanks, you, guys. Caroline and Pam, so much. We do have an audience member that is standing up and clapping saying, great demo. Oh, great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Even after all that, woohoo! <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Thanks, Adrian. We really appreciate you putting this together for us. Oh, no problem. It's my pleasure. I love it. And um, everybody, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.